Alright guys, so before I start writing any code, what I want to do is I kind of want to take a step back and explain exactly how this game project is set up because it's going to save you guys a lot of confusion and a lot of headaches in the future. So first of all, remember one of the cool things about this framework is you can develop games for other platforms. In other words, we can write code one time and we can eventually deploy it on other platforms like iOS, um, the web, Android of course. Now that's why you see this Android directory in a core directory. Now remember whenever we were setting up our project I unchecked iOS and desktop or web or whatever all those other ones were because I'm just focused on making Android games for this tutorial series. However if I left those checked then you would see other directories under Android. Android, iOS, desktop, a bunch of other ones. So what's the deal with this? Do we have to you know tweak a bunch of code in all of those? Well no. The code that we're actually going to be writing is in this core. So for the first couple of examples if we hop over to my GDX game and open this as you can see this is the code that ran that little demo this you know this is like a real quick explanation but this created the um, that little image and right here you're setting the background to red so this is where we're going to be writing all of our code so now you're saying alright well why would they even put this Android folder in here though what do we do with that whenever you write a game that's going to run on multiple platforms there's going to be some code that you write that is specific to Android or maybe specific to iOS any code that is specific to that platform you're gonna write in that platforms directory however we aren't gonna really be worrying about that since we're gonna keep things really simple so again 99 percent of the time not only in this tutorial but even if you decide to develop for other platforms you're gonna work in the core directory so that is you know a quick little explanation so now what I want to do is actually explain what's in this file so in this file again we have a bunch of crap that's created by default the image and the background and stuff however to make things really simple and just for this first demo here's what I want to do I want to go ahead and delete all of these variables all those objects and also delete everything inside your methods so right now what you're looking at is a blank project this is a lot easier to explain whenever I'm just you know starting out teaching this stuff so the first thing of course we have a bunch of imports alright well we're gonna be learning about all those later whenever we start typing any code now the class there's the name extends application adapter so right off the bat we're seeing that we inherit from this class called application adapter probably should know a little bit about that well what this class is is it includes a bunch a bunch ugh, of methods that get called automatically at different points in your game. So we already can see that we have this method called create and render, and there's some other ones too, but I'll talk to you guys about the other methods when we need them. Let's go ahead and figure out what these methods do right now. Well, this is a method that gets automatically called whenever our app is first created. So the user just opens your app, it runs this class, creates it, so any code you put in here um, is going to be called. So this is really good for just initializing, you know, your variables, setting up all your resources. We're pretty much going to be setting everything up in create. All right, that was easy enough to understand. What about this render? Render is going to be continuously called whenever our game is running. So you can think of it as the main game loop. This method is going to be called depending on your device somewhere like 30 to 80 times every single second so again this is a method that gets called repeatedly so any functionality to kind of render objects on the screen or drum or anything like that we're gonna stick in here so again set everything up run the game and again we don't need to actually go in another file and call these because they get called automatically cool thing about this framework so let's go ahead and just figure out how to print some really simple text on the screen right now. 